So uh, I wanted to start with the question of embracing failure uh, that uh, many people talk today about uh, very eloquently. It is a, an issue that is personal, that is very human. The narrative goes something like that. Tough upbringing, tough conditions um, uh, growing up and through determination, through hard work, through smarts, people actually turn their lot and become extremely successful, become innovators, become artists, creators, leaders, and so on and so forth. Largely, it is a narrative of a personal story, of a human story. The question that I have been struggling with is, is failure scalable? I want to talk about Detroit. I want to talk about Detroit's success, not just failures. But the question is, can failure be scalable? Well, we have demonstrated as human beings that we can actually fail, and fail in many, many ways. But groups fail, families fail, society sometimes fail. Companies, we know, go out of business and, in fact, uh, uh, fail. We know that cities can uh, go into receivership and file bankruptcy. Even countries fail. So the question of scalability is, in fact, a question that we can answer easily. Yes, cities fail and countries fail. So if I want to talk about cities and, um, uh, and their failure, the question becomes, do I need to talk about it in the terminology of, uh, uh, of statistics and data and uh, economics and urban policy and um, uh, social policy when we are inundated with data that talks about why Detroit or why cities rise and fall, it's always a question of many of us that actually shrug it off. So I wanted to do something different. This is a TEDx talk, and you can take some liberty in actually making some of these analogies. And the, and the idea was, can I actually look at cities through the prism of companies? Both are a uh, 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 network of systems that connect people and transactions and commerce and innovations and ideas. But one, we can easily understand failure and success. The other is much more complicated. So maybe by looking at one, we can understand the other and not only understand it, but can actually um, uh, predict uh, some uh, of, uh, of the future of cities. So I wanted to talk about cities and Detroit through the lens of comparing Microsoft and Apple. Two companies that we are all familiar with, two companies that are in the same industry, and uh, two companies that started in a very similar place but ended in two different places. One created software operating system and licensed it to, the, uh, to manufacturers to manufacture PCs and, uh, the, and the beginning of the personal computer industry. The other one was a little bit more complicated. Uh, they saw themselves at the intersection of arts and sciences. They uh, fully understood that user interface is an important aspect of, uh, of computing and as such integrated hardware and software. And then the trajectory of these two companies are, is very interesting to actually watch what happened over the past 30 years. In the first 15 years or so, there was a clear winner in, uh, in the contest of um, the personal computers. Uh, Apple was a niche player at best. Microsoft dominated uh, the PC market. And in fact, uh, its stock value, and this is one of the good things about the companies, we can actually determine success and failure easily at uh, looking at the market valuation. Um, as Microsoft market value was thousands of times higher uh, than that of Apple. But since 2000, and the ensuing 12 or so years since then, something really interesting happened. Microsoft uh, stock value, uh, in fact, um, uh, went down, while Apple is 3,000% higher than where, uh, where it was. And uh, in a way, uh, people do not dispute Apple's success as a company that has uh, uh, entered new markets and uh, is innovative and is extremely creative. And of course, we all uh, see some of these pictures 
where uh, the, the image of Microsoft is a bit stodgy, is a bit clinging to its um, uh, monopoly on um, uh, operating systems and the productivity suite, while Apple is the innovative, creative, uh, more risk taker of, uh, of the two. We can say with, with uh, certainty that Apple is a, an amazing success. Everybody knows that about the iPhone and the iPad and wait uh, in lines for their product, but can we really say that Microsoft is a failure? A, well, you know, if you look at the leadership over the past 15 years, maybe we shouldn't go there. But let's actually decide uh, what failure is first uh, before we, um, we can label uh, a company that is worth $250 billion and give it an attribute that many people would uh, feel uh, aghast about us uh, calling them uh, as such. Failure in our mind, and it is the definition, it is the omission of expected or required action. It is really the outcome as compared to the potential, not just the outcome in absolute terms. And if you look at it that way, you can actually easily say that Microsoft has not performed to its potential. It, it is the first uh, uh, computer um, uh, company that entered the phone industry, but never really was able to bring in the uh, innovations uh, that Apple later on was able to bring. This is a picture that uh, I think is very telling, where Microsoft is opening stores across the, the aisle, sort of speak, uh, from an Apple store. Again, it, was, it became a follower rather, uh, rather than a leader. But we, we need to actually dig a little bit more to be able to understand if, in fact, there is that sense about a company uh, that uh, has not um, performed to its full potential, uh, that may be an interesting place for us to start talking about Detroit and can do the comparison between Detroit as a city and its history and, uh, and Microsoft. Again, um, uh, both had very innovative beginnings. One, uh, licensing uh, its uh, best innovation, the operating system DOS. Uh, some of us who are 50 plus years old remember that. The younger generation doesn't know what DOS means, but uh, trust me, it used to be the only operating system for personal computers at the time. And the other one, of course, uh, we are actually in the, uh, the heart of uh, Detroit and the heart of uh, Henry Ford and the uh, innovation of the car. The interesting thing was that, uh, in a way, and again, I'm trying to draw parallels, and of course, the analogy is not 100% uh, bulletproof, but uh, uh, try to be a little bit more imaginative and go with the flow, as they say. Uh, Microsoft licensed its, uh, its uh, software. It did not manufacture uh, PCs. It did not uh, get into that market. It licensed its uh, innovation, while Detroit, in a similar sense, didn't license but exported cars to the rest of the world. What happened next is also a very interesting for us to compare. One uh, created an explosive growth in the PC market. I remember there was a quote when uh, IBM uh, R&D came about with, uh, with the first PC and uh, you know, somebody was asking how many units will you be able to sell and somebody said something like, we think you know, uh, maybe we will sell 10 uh, in one year and of course we know where the PC market went. In a similar, f in a similar way, the invention of cars exploded growth in the built environment of this country and of many countries, but because this country is new and there was plenty of green fields and, uh, and undeveloped uh, land, uh, it, it caused quite a bit of growth uh, of our built environment, a growth that, uh, that created separations between where we work and where we live, growth that created separations between us and as people because it allowed us to actually get in a car and go to places where people like us are, uh, live there. Uh, it allowed us to separate uh, between old and, um, and uh, young, between rich and poor, and so on and so forth. But in an interesting similarity between a, a software company and a uh, car uh, invention, both created tremendous growth in, uh, in the market. So let's actually try to then pull back and try to understand the similarity of where may, they may have failed. 
The interesting thing about Microsoft and the way it kind of lost its footing in the past several years was that it was never uh, interested in the human experience. It was interested in the efficiency of the machine itself, of the software uh, programs and so on and so forth. It actually was very happy with an army of IT experts and consultants and mountains of um, uh, books that describe how to set up your PCs and how to set up uh, networks and how to uh, troubleshoot and so on. Didn't feel that the user interface was an, an important aspect of what they do. In an interesting way, Detroit, in exporting the car as, as a symbol of mobility, in fact, we started to invest in infrastructure for the machine, not an in infrastructure for human beings. Highways that took us easily from where we worked to places where, again, were planned uh, communities, and we started thinking about the machine rather than thinking about the human. And in an interesting way, I want to make that, uh, that analogy that the focus on the machine is really at the heart of maybe where we are today with Detroit and where, uh, where uh, we can actually make, uh, make a difference. So speaking of human and a human interface, maybe this is the right time for us to bring Apple. It's a company that focused on the user interface and focused uh, with a, a, uh, uh, a very uh, intense um, uh, understanding of integrating hardware and software to create that, uh, that interface. Uh, Steve Jobs used to say, you just open the box and it works. And in many, in many ways, uh, all of us uh, know of stories when the iPhone came about and you would give it to a three-year-old child. It's in fact, somehow the, the three-year-old child knows how to deal with, uh, uh, with the screen and uh, with the different apps and so on and so forth. And when we think of Apple and we think today of Apple's iPads and iPhones, we, we forget that in fact it didn't start there. It started with a little bit more um, uh, maybe uh, discrete projects. The iMac was one of the first projects that Steve Jobs, after he came back to Apple, worked on that embodied this idea that uh, integration of hardware and software is so important in making a user interface so seamless and so holistic as, uh, as, a, uh, uh, as an experience. So in, when you think of even their stock uh, value, the iMac and the beginning uh, was the beginning of the new uh, version of Apple uh, after Jobs came back and uh, took the helm. So the question for us, as we are looking at the similarities between Microsoft and Apple as it relates to Detroit and other cities, can in fact Detroit become an Apple rather than a Microsoft? It's an interesting question. We think actually not only uh, Detroit is learning from that experience, we think Detroit is doing it. And in fact, we think that Midtown is the iMac of Detroit and is the iMac of, uh, of the new uh, breed of uh, cities within, uh, within uh, the, the US. And why we f feel about uh, Midtown so strongly, not only because we have been working here and came to know many people here, but we actually think about Midtown as the iMac of Detroit, because we think for the first time, Detroit has put the human before the machine. And of course, some of you may know who this uh, person is. This is Sue Mosey, as we call her the mayor of, uh, of Midtown. Uh, Sue uh, embodies the, uh, the shift of focus that Midtown and Detroit now has on, on this neighborhood. I love this picture because um, it was taken a year ago when Sue Mosey was given a uh, city award. I uh, can't remember the title of, uh, of the award, but she decided to take the picture in the center of Woodward Avenue, a nine lane thoroughfare that is so extremely difficult to, uh, to cross. Uh, a road that largely was, uh, was designed for the comfort of the car, not the comfort of the human being. She decided to sit in the middle of that street in defiance of the car to say humans come actually first. And of course, Sue Mosey 
is not only the Midtown uh, mayor, but she embodies the new view of Midtown as a walkable, dense, vibrant community that can actually be at the core of the new Detroit that we have been working on. And when you think of actually what's happening in Midtown, this is another picture uh, that I think symbolizes what happened in Detroit 20 years ago versus what's happening in Midtown today. This is an amazing theater, performing arts center that uh, the best and highest use became to park cars in rather than to actually uh, uh, create uh, spaces for human beings. But Midtown is not doing that. Midtown is in fact creating spaces for human interaction and human integration. We are not anymore investing in infrastructure for the car, we are investing in infrastructure for transit. There is something very interesting about you actually going into a, uh, uh, a transit uh, line where you're, the, next, uh, the next person is not just like you, the next person could be very different from you and what that means as a rich experience for human interaction. We are not anymore investing in tools that separate us. Again, separating us from where we work and separating us by color, separating us by income, separating us by age. We actually are investing in places that integrate us. This is Midtown uh, Inc. Collaboratory. Uh, we, uh, it is the home of, the, of Sue Mosey, but it is the place where institutions, foundations, community, city folks come together to actually create a shared vision for, uh, for Midtown. Again, it is integration and not separation. And we are sitting about two blocks away from Tech Town, a district that we believe will in fact usher a groundbreaking uh, a new idea in urban, uh, in urban uh, America, a place where research, innovation, uh, uh, education come together to create new discoveries, but creating new discoveries not in a suburban research park, creating new discoveries in, ha in a place that is walkable and dense, that, uh, that, is, that the sidewalks are filled with people and filled with energy and activity. It is a place that will refocus Detroit and Midtown on its people. So in an interesting parable, as Apple disrupted many of its industries that it entered, whether it is the music industry, the phone or the telecommunication industry, even the book industry, we think that in fact Detroit will disrupt sprawl. And we believe that what's happening in Midtown and what will happen in Detroit over the next decade will define f uh, many uh, of the tools that will be used in urban America across the country to disrupt the sprawl and to bring us back to a sustainable um, uh, built environment that, uh, that works. I am betting on Detroit's future and I want to invest against the grain and I hope you do as well. Thank you.